This is the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter, 2021. Lesson 10 for May 29 to June 4, The New Covenant. Read by Dr. Percy Harold. Friday, June 4. From the book The Desire of Ages, page 659, written by Ellen White, we read, In partaking with his disciples of the bread and wine, Christ pledged himself to them as their Redeemer. He committed to them the new covenant by which all who receive him become children of God and joint heirs with Christ. By this covenant, every blessing that heaven could bestow for this life and the life to come was theirs. This covenant deed was to be ratified with the blood of Christ, and the administration of the sacrament was to keep before the disciples the infinite sacrifice made for each of them individually as a part of the great whole of fallen humanity. End of quote. And from the same writer, page 138 of God's Amazing Grace, The most striking feature of this covenant of peace is the exceeding riches of the pardoning mercy expressed to the sinner if he repents and turns from his sin. The Holy Spirit describes the gospel as salvation through the tender mercies of our God. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, the Lord declares of those who repent, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews 8.12 Does God turn from justice in showing mercy to the sinner? No. God cannot dishonour his law by suffering it to be transgressed with impunity. Under the new covenant, perfect obedience is the condition of life. If the sinner repents and confesses his sin, he will find pardon. By Christ's sacrifice in his behalf, forgiveness is secured for him. Christ has satisfied the demands of the law for every repentant, believing sinner. End of quote. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. One, what is the advantage of having the law written in the heart rather than on tablets of stone alone? Which is easy to forget, the law written on stones or the law written in the heart? Two, Ever since the fall of humanity, salvation has been found only through Jesus, even if the revelation of that truth varied in different epochs of history. Do not the covenants work the same way? 3. Look at the second Ellen G. White quote in today's study. What does she mean by perfect obedience as the requirement for a covenant relationship? Who is the only one who has rendered perfect obedience? How does that obedience answer the demands of the law for us? And so to summarise this week's lesson, the new covenant is a greater, more complete and better revelation of the plan of salvation. We who partake of it, partake of it by faith. A faith that will manifest itself in obedience to a law written in our hearts. Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled A Church for Tourists and it's by Andrew McChesney of Adventist Mission. The new pastor was shocked when he showed up at the Bucharest International Seventh-day Adventist Church, the only English-speaking church in Romania's capital, and found only three people present. All three were Romanian. Three weeks later, Pastor Benjamin Stan learned that one of those three, a 21-year-old woman, was leaving. He wondered why God had led him to a dead church. Why am I here? he prayed. Why did you give me this call? At that moment, two American tourists walked in the door. Benjamin realised that tourists need a place to worship. He kept praying. A couple of weeks later, he found a man dressed in a suit and tie waiting outside the church. The man lived with his family in Poland and worked in Romania. He belonged to another Christian church, but, after studying the Bible, wanted a Sabbath-keeping church. Benjamin realised that there are foreigners who work in Romania but don't speak Romanian. They need a place to worship. 
After several months, Benjamin suggested holding Sabbath school and the divine worship service on Sabbath mornings. Until then, the church didn't have a Sabbath school, and its hour-long worship service took place on Sabbath evenings. The two members opposed the proposal. They went to Romanian churches on Sabbath mornings and didn't want to lose those friends. But Benjamin was insistent. We do not come here to study English, he said. We come here to study the Bible. We need to be a church. Visiting other churches, Benjamin invited two teens and a man of about 30 to help organise the worship programme. He advertised the new morning worship schedule on social media. That first Sabbath, 32 people showed up. You should have seen the expressions on the face of the two members when they arrived, Benjamin recalled. Their eyes were big. They were surprised when they saw so many people, especially young people, in the church. The Polish man was baptised several weeks later. Today, Benjamin has no doubt that the church, started by Pastor Adrian Bocaneo in 2010, serves an important role in Bucharest. It has 26 members and weekly attendance ranges from 30 to 50 people, including tourists, foreign workers and international students. What happened to those three people who attended the church on Benjamin's first Sabbath? They are now very involved, including the young woman who left. She is now a church leader. And there's a photograph of Pastor Adrian here in front of a building. Connect with the Bucharest International Seventh-day Adventist Church at facebook.com slash English Adventist. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.